There was how many things that went wrong. If you didn't laugh, you would be crying. Took them, what, 22, 23 hours to get the camera car out of there. This was actually, I think, one of the first proper travel shows where we've had female presenters on. I thought high country in this standard car is gonna be a punish. It surprised me, it's quite capable and it was super fun to drive. But it just goes to show that you just don't need much to, to get out. Well, it is that time. We are back with another cracker of an episode of Bees in the Shed. I'm just gonna check in with my good mate, a Jesse, how are you, mate? It has been a hot minute. Oh, it has been a while. Yeah, I think what it was before Christmas I saw you. Yeah, it's been ages. Yeah, I think Victoria in the high country was last time I saw you with Mighty Clifford and we have much to discuss on that in particular. This episode, of course, we are gonna go behind the scenes with everything you need to know. Yeah, sounds good to me, mate. Let's do it, eh? Let's start with the elephant in the room. Now, it is an elephant of a vehicle, the camera car. <laughs> oh, that, most definitely. That thing is big and heavy. That, that made the trip go from zero to 100, didn't it? Like that was the point where by that stage, we changed a clutch in the Suzuki Sierra already at a campsite, which we'd never done before. That was pretty fun, but changing a clutch in a Zook's pretty easy. And uh, we're, we're both experts at it now. But yeah, most then definitely. the clutch in the camera car went, and that's, that's, I guess, what I think in the trip is the point where the trip went like next level. That was where we're like, oh no, because you gotta remember we were in the middle of nowhere when that happened. And once the clutch oh, goes, yeah. you, your only option is to flat tow it out. I guess that, that's pretty much it. Mm. Yeah, most definitely. And and we were deep in the high country, as you said. And even if we had like your big dog Hilux in my car there, I still think we would have struggled to get it out. So with the vehicles we had, we had to call in the cavalry. That basically had to get the uh, Admiral boys there in the big Unimog. Yeah, definitely. And that was it was no mean feat for them either. I mean, it took them what 22, 23 hours to get the camera car out of there. So yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it was. And Jesse messaged me when they got back, and he said it was 22 hours door to door, which was like. Hard work for them too, because the track we're on was very tight. They'd do lots of chainsawing and digging out some of the banks to fit the Unimog through. That Unimog had, I think it was 30,000 pound winches front and rear mm. on, on it. Yeah. And it still took that long to get the camera car out of there. So that gives you a bit of an idea. But we, we got the camera car out of there. Big thanks to the boys at Admiral Towing. Got the camera car out of there and she's back. I mean, did uh, a Tassie trip a few weeks later after that with the camera car and she absolutely loved it. So um, we got a few much yeah. needed mods as well after that new clutch yeah. went in. But uh, Yeah, mate, the boys it, got some um, reduction gears and after Tassie, I heard them raving about them. They reckon it's so much easier to drive now. Anyone watching this has had a ZD30 knows they're pretty uh, pretty gutless down low. So they reckon it definitely helped and hopefully it won't need to be towed out the bush anytime soon. Definitely, mate, definitely. So that was the camera car, that was one. I want to also talk about Big Clifford, which is right behind me on the hoist, mate, because um, I actually just got back from a trip in Clifford as well um, around New South Wales, which you've seen in a little while, but we want to talk about your time in Clifford. Well, like even even getting it down there was a bit of a uh, bit of a mission. We drove it down from what, mid coast of New South Wales, and it, it was probably a nine, 10 hour journey. Um, it does have some lower gear ratios and only small tires, so it was revving. I could only do about 80 k's on the highway, but I got there. It's very noisy inside. Had my ear pods in, but my ears are still ringing at the end of every day. Um, and then it had been sort of rebuilt and stuff, and all the bolts had been replaced from factory owners with Allen key dome heads. And every day I had to go around the car, if they weren't falling out of me, try and do them up and put them back in. Uh, what else did we do? The clutch, obviously, and a lot of people saying, oh, you're riding the clutch and all that sort of stuff. I actually wasn't. When the clutch went, I was coasting down a hill, and what felt like it popped out of gear. We got down the bottom, adjusted the clutch, and I think that was the last bit of friction material wore off, and the clutch was gone. The good thing about that, though, we pulled the clutch out, and it was really strange. The flywheel still had machining marks on it, so the clutch must have just failed the material, maybe from getting wet on the episode before. What else did we do? After we flooded it, I went to my mate's house in Victoria. We changed all the oils. They were all milky, all the diff oils, all the gearbox oils. We did an engine oil change. I uh, got a few spare filters and whatnot. Oh, that night we were at the workshop super late fixing the Hilux. We nearly ran out of fuel on the way back and I thought it was running crappy because of the fuel, but the lights are doing down. And the alternator had pretty much fallen off. I had like one bolt left in the top. So I scanned around our mate's workshop and got some bolts in it. But um, other than that, I don't think too much more went wrong. Everything I had in the back has now got a bit of red on it from Clifford from rubbing and all the bouncing around. But um, when you talked me off of that car, I thought high country in this standard car is gonna be a punish, but it surprised me. It's quite capable and it was super fun to drive. Really took me back to grassroots driving and picking a line and all that sort of stuff. That's um, probably a really good segue into the fact that you did a couple of weeks in the high country in Little Clifford, which had 
what, standard suspension. It had a snorkel, of course, which is probably something you need for the high country, but there wasn't much else. We just threw some gear in it and away we went. Now, obviously, you used, you know, my fridge and the camera car's fridge and, you know, yeah. we, we kind of spread the load. But it just goes to show that you just don't need much to, to get out. And, like, you've got the basics, tools and spares and things that you, you need to uh, to make sure you're being safe and recovery gear and, yeah. and bits and pieces yeah. like that. But the fact that you can take a vehicle that's not that modified out into the bush with your mates and have as much fun as we all did. I mean, I don't think I saw you take the smile off your face for the whole time we were down there, mate. And for that high country too, would be a bucket list trip for a lot of people. And I bet there's people sitting at home telling themselves they can't go because they haven't got this done to their car, that done to their car. And I'll tell you what, that took me back to when I was had my people at Snyder Suzuki. I'd be doing that every weekend, Esky in the back, didn't even have a fridge. And I didn't care. I had my recovery gear, Esky and some tools and I went. So like, like you said, you don't you don't need the biggest and best to go and do a bucket list trip. Just pack your car and get away and give it a go. Definitely, mate. Just so much fun. And speaking of that workshop where you uh, discovered that the alternator had fallen off the Zook, that was where we discovered the problems with the Hilux and why we couldn't just refit another CV to it. That was down at Terralgan Ford Drive Centre. What had happened was, I think on one of those hill climbs, I hit one of the mounts for the diff, one of the cast mounts for the diff and mm. bent the diff up so the actual front diff was sitting like that which is where the cv goes in the end and what that was causing is when the diff was up like that as soon as the cv shaft would go in it was already getting pulled down on an angle so at full droop it was just popping the cv out of that little inner cup that slides in so that was why i had to do the rest of the trip in two-wheel drive but fortunately we were able to straighten that mount out and uh and get it back in and i actually chucked the cv in and now the hilux is all sweet to go mate i think you know, we've we've been on a lot of adventures together, but this was, I guess, the first time we had some mates along with us, like Liv and Bell, and Liam, Costa and Blake, all coming along yeah. to, for those two trips. And geez, it was a lot of fun. For our first time having mates along with us, usually it's just us mucking around, but uh, I think they had just as much fun as, <laughs> as we did. <laughs> oh yeah, I think they were laughing at us most of the time, but yeah, the, yeah. the whole time I was smiling and laughing and there was, there was that many things that went wrong. If you didn't laugh, you would be crying. But um, yeah, it's definitely one that will go down in history, I reckon. I mean, I thought um, my mum was paying them to laugh at my jokes, but uh, we still had <laughs> a lot of fun nonetheless. And of course, we put the question out on social media for you guys at home, what you wanted to know from behind the scenes from that trip. And we got a stack of questions back because if you couldn't half tell, if you haven't watched the episode already, go and check it out. A lot happened. This one from Tom Fillery said, please let the Zook survive to see another trip with the farm truck and the G60. Well, Tom, I can tell you, mate, I actually just got back from a trip where I took Clifford. Mate, uh, Jesse, I was talking to you about this just before. It was epic. It was, as Jesse said at the start of this, grassroots, just real basic wheeling, you know, like original line picking, and it was so much fun. I uh, came out a bit worse for wear because I don't really fit in a Suzuki Sierra that well, but you will see that one <laughs> soon. And then I don't know what the plan is after that with the Zook, mate. Maybe we'll have to have a, a couple of beers and chat about it because uh, it's so yeah. much fun, but... But who knows where we'll go next. There's a question here from Gray Kens. Is there any footage of Liv's rooftop are coming off? There's actually no footage of that. That was shortly after, probably about 10 minutes after we had to leave the camera car and we were trying to get to camp before dark. Right on dusk and we heard over the radio some uh, colorful words from Liv. <laughs> we got out and walked back and Liv's tent was completely off. So if you watch the video, you'll notice that I did check Lev's hearing was still working because she hit the tent at the front but kept driving till she heard it hit the ground. But um, we lifted it back on and uh, yeah, sorry, there's no footage of that. Well, yeah, there, there's no footage of it actually happening because we were just, I guess, transporting to camp by that stage. But mm. uh, definitely plenty of footage of the aftermath. Uh, Liv had a bit yeah. of a red face after, after that happened. But um, as far as I hear, mate, the tent is back on, secured and ready to go. Liv and Tommy have been camping out of it a fair bit since that trip, so... No damage was done, uh, albeit to the ego, but good bit of fun nonetheless. Just on that, mate, there's a comment here from Sam Pierce. It says, uh, my wife loves seeing the girls on more and more and wants them on a whole lot more. Uh, and, mate, absolutely right. This was actually, I think, one of the first proper travel shows where we've had our female presenters on. And, mate, it was awesome. Mm. It was something that you guys at home have been asking for for a very, very long time. And it was great to finally get some, some girls out on the tracks to... Uh, not only have fun, mate, but a couple of times they out drove the heck out of us. So um, <laughs> we definitely got towed up a few times, but no, it was awesome. Liv and, and Belle were um, 
great additions to the team and good fun to take out on the tracks, but definitely something we've um, we've wanted to do for a long time and something that we'll do more of in the future because uh, just from reading some of the comments on some of the videos, mate, the uh, the response from having a couple of ladies on the show was was really, really good. So we'll be doing more of that, definitely. Most definitely. But we'll also have to, like, like we spoke about, we'll tell them if they do come back that they can't keep out driving us. So as long as they yeah. agree to that, we'll, we'll be sweet to have them back, I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, maybe Liv just watch the trees with your rooftop tent, but uh, on the tough tracks and stuff, <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll probably smoke us. But uh, um, mate, this other one is from uh, D4NS80, and he said, uh, "Anyone taking bets on what Jocko did to my fingers?" Um, yeah, I can tell you what happened to my fingers. It was actually I cut this finger. There's still a scar. I cut this finger on day one of the trip, and it was quite a deep cut. It was right on the bend, and every time I bent it, I could um, I could see. I could see a fair way in. Um, so what I ended up doing is I patched it up and I just strapped these two fingers together so that I wouldn't bend this one and open that wound back up. So that's why it happened right at the start of the trip. So um, yeah, I pretty much just had to cop it and um, have these two fingers strapped together for a while. So that's what happened. I'm uh, a bit of a, a peanut and I cut my finger. But we've got one here. Did you blokes pre-pack a new clutch before the trip knowing the clutch was already on its way out? Or is there a Repco in the high country now? Didn't these guys know? I, I, there's actually Repco Max right on the top of uh, Billy Goat's Bluff. It just there opened is, up. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it was the opening weekend that weekend. So we got the clutch for, I think, 30% off. So it was actually a good deal. No, no, no. <laughs> we were actually, we were sort of near the outskirts there. And I've got a few mates in Victoria. So is Jock. And we, we got on the phone. We got some reception. And uh, one of our mates is a Zook nut. And he actually happened to have a brand new one there he's going to put in the car on the weekend. And he wasn't too far away. So. We traded some uh, beers and he drove it up to us. By the time he got there, we'd had the clutch out. Happy days, ready to go. It was probably the world's fastest campsite clutch change, mate. I think we did it, what, is what, four and a half hours or so, something around there? Yeah, I think so. And Luke, the cameraman, sort of looked at you and me both before we started. He said, oh, have you boys done a Suzuki clutch before? Do you know what you're doing? And we looked at each other and said, no, nah, we've never done nah. one. <laughs> yeah. But we, yeah. Uh, we got it done. I, I was so delighted with how light that is compared to patrol parts. It was, it was a breeze. Mate, this question, before we move on, comes from Rubicon Daddy. <laughs> I wonder if that's American Grey or something. But uh, yeah, Rubicon Daddy asks, uh, what was your favourite moment of the trip? Jesse, what was your favourite moment of the trip? Driving up up Billy Goats in the Zook, I was I was honestly, for some of that, I was scared. I, th there's big cliffs and that car, like, you've got to carry momentum and the front wheels kept picking up and pointing me off the track. So I was, I was kind of scared. But when I got to the top of that, I... Uh, yeah, I felt a great sense of achievement. I was happy I was alive. So that's probably one of my favorite bits. And it was super specky as well. I think for me, probably my favorite part of the trip, bit of a weird one, mate. But um, as I guess everyone who's watched that episode knows, it, um, it got pretty hectic. And I think my favorite moment of the trip is everyone there, camera crew, you and I, all the, um, the mates of ours who came along. When it all turned to custard, everyone just did up their boots and got on with it and still had, you know, smiles mm. on their faces and, and had a great time and appreciated where we were and how beautiful the place was. Even though things weren't really going our way, everyone still had an yeah. awesome time. The camaraderie there was was fantastic and, uh, you know, a yeah. great bunch of mates who I guess were, <laughs> were probably even closer together after that. There was one moment there was real late at night and everyone just hooked in and, and got on with the jobs they needed to do. And I had this brief, you know, smile and nod um, that, you know, I was in the right place at the right time with... Uh, a good bunch of mates. So that was probably my favorite part. And then, of course, the yeah. reviews, as you said. But what we'd like to know is what was your favorite moment because our mates at Forex have got a prize pack, Jesse. Exactly, mate. We've got a Forex merch pack to give away to the best comment below. All you've got to do is comment your favorite moment of the Victorian High Country trip. We'll go through and pick a winner and we'll send you out a merch pack. We have lots to get through, but first, I have a cracker of a deal for Deal of the Month. And this is for the DriveTech 4x4 Camp Kitchen and Drawer Setup. The exact same one. I got it in the back of the N70 and you can get it for 15% off at 4drive247.com. You need to be quick though because the deal's only going to last until the 28th of Feb. It's mint because you get plenty of prep space with a pull-out table. You've also got a spot to put your cooker and you've got a drawer there for cutlery, you know, sauces and cups and stuff like that. Awesome bit of kit, mate, and definitely something whether you've got a ute or a wagon or a tray back to bolt in the back of your canopy. So be quick and jump on it. And don't miss out at 4drive247.com. You can win all of this and travel off-road in style. This is Marta's Cows for Cancer, biggest ever lottery. Now this total prize package is worth over $350,000 
and it could be yours. Check out this essential caravan. It's built to go anywhere in absolute class and style. Inside, you've got an ensuite, there's bunk beds, there's a queen size bed, kitchenette. It's got a full 12 volt system, solar panels on the roof. This thing is made to go just about anywhere you dream to. And have a go with the tow vehicle. This is a brand new Land Rover Defender. Now, it's got heaps of grunt for towing. It's got air suspension and inside, it's got all the comfort to take you anywhere you dare to go. So do yourself a favour, for only 30 bucks you can grab a ticket, head straight to carsforcancer.com.au, get in quick because entries do close on March 13. We've been doing heaps of other stuff, I mean there's a comment here from Elise Cowley says, did I see Clifford driving past the Yowl area with the Steady 200 in convoy? Yes you did, uh, that was the trip that's coming up with me in Big Clifford, which you'll see very, very soon. So uh, it hasn't stopped there. The fun in Clifford continues, mate. And uh, that's what I've been up to, I guess, wheeling around some New South Wales tough tracks in a little Suzuki Sierra. But what about you? Uh, we've had lots of questions asking what's happening with the patrol. Yeah, what is happening with the patrol? Well, as everyone knows, it's been a while since there's been an episode and we've had Christmas in between. <laughs> Very expensive time of the year. I've slowly been chipping away and I've nearly got all the parts to finish. I just had to save up for a while and didn't want to spend too much over Christmas. And um, I reckon oh, probably within a few weeks, you'll see this thing driving. And I am as keen as you guys to have it driving because I tell you what, I'm over it sitting in my shed and every time I move it out, I'm just, it's a nice smooth car and I'm, uh, my GQ needs a bit of love too. So I need another car on the road. So Hopefully within the next month or so, you'll see another video of it. Mate, I cannot wait to see that. And I'm sure a lot of people at home are frothing to see it too. Maybe we'll even get it out on a trip soon, but uh, but who knows? Hey, maybe what do you reckon? Six stage or big red or something like that? What's the plan? Nah, 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 nah. So I've told you this before, but this is going to be my good car. It's only going to have 33s on it. And um, if the track's like rated any more than medium, it's got a thing in it. It's like a gate on the on the transfer oh, stick. You didn't tell and me it won't actually. Yeah, it won't go into four-wheel drive, so it's mm. it's more of a touring car. And I'm sure, like, you know, it might get a little bit of bop here and there and some harder tracks, but I'm trying to keep it clean. And, uh, you know, if I need to do something harder, wreck a car, that's what my GQ is made for. So hopefully... Is that the, is that the feature can... on the transfer case? Is that as a direct result of putting a shopping mum engine in it? Yeah, pretty much. It's actually a part I've taken out of the BMW. We just had to change two wires um, and it works. It's normally the automatic, uh, the boom, like the tailgate lift up on the BMW, but I've yes, used that yep, motor yep. to stop the thing work. So, because I don't, I don't have a tailgate that can open up. So, yeah, it's a yeah, BMW a smart part. Man. So. Very smart. I like it. Now, awesome, mate. I know uh, myself and a lot of others are very, very excited to see that vehicle. So, keen to see mm. what you do with it, mate. Well, Jesse, mate, that's a bit of what we've been up to, but now it's time to hear from you guys, from your shed, because Beers in the Shed isn't just about behind the scenes of what we've been up to out on the tracks. It's also a good time to hear from you guys on builds, rigs, fails, and of course, what the future four drivers have been up to as well, mate. We've got some epic mm. prizes and giveaways to get through, but before we get into it, here's a bit of a story from you guys. We've had a video sent in here from Adam Tresseter. And he sent in a video of him doing an engine swap and body mount repairs. And he said he's going to keep us updated on the build so we can see the outcome. I'm super keen to see that. It's good to see people getting stuck into their work in their shed. Definitely, mate. And it looks like he's doing a full rebuild on that big TD42 as well. So that thing mm. is going to be epic. Adam, make sure you keep us in the loop, mate. We're keen to see that one hook in. Now, mate, I want to get into some fails here because there is one which I saw on Instagram when it came up. And uh, this is, of course, from Outdoor Explorer with that mint Defender. And I've got to tell you, mate, this fail kind of broke my heart. As you know, I've got a bit of a soft spot for Defenders. And seeing mm. this one here was pretty loose. But I saw it on social media. You were actually there. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, we were with Jonathan a bit. And like you said... Defenders, I'm not really much of a fan, but this one I did have a soft spot for. It's got a lot of good parts, and the best thing I like about it is it gets wheeled very hard. So it was only sort of a number of days until everything went wrong, the way Jono drives. We're out at the Springs for a twilight wheel. You're not normally meant to night wheel out there, but Lucas opened up the night for it. And um, Jono was last car on the waterfall. I was the car before him, and he had a crack and just sort of slipped the wrong way and ended up on his roof, the poor fella. He was um, he was all good, and the car is okay. Um, I actually went down the bottom. I've got a video of me winching him back on his wheels and we had uh, Jeff from Do It In The Dirt at the top lowering him down so we didn't do any more damage to the car. Um, there was oil everywhere. So Lucas brought us a spill kit. We mopped up all the oil in the creek and then I towed him back to camp. Um, in the morning, uh, it sat overnight and we actually got it running and Jonathan drove it out to his trailer at the front of the park. So it's still driving and mobile. He just needs um, a bit of time to give it some TLC and we'll see it back out in the tracks, hopefully. 
Yeah, mate, I can see the junker hiding in the corner there for the recovery, and it's such a shame, but of course, when you wheel tough stuff, sometimes things like this can happen. It looks like that cab is pretty fed, so I imagine mm. he's got a bit of work ahead of him to uh, get that defender sorted, but hopefully we'll see it back out on the tracks, mate, because, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a bit of a closet Land Rover fan, as you know. Oh, definitely. They're a cool thing, and I think the drama, he said, is because... Um, they're sort of so rare. All the panels and everything are so expensive. So hopefully uh -huh. he can find some cheap enough somewhere and he'll be out on the tracks in no time because he is a ton of fun to wheel with. Definitely, mate. Definitely. Radio Jock, have a look at this rig from Zane Tibbs. It's a 1984 H-Day 47 Land Cruiser and I've got a massive soft spot for these things. My old Big man's time. got one of these. And when I was little, actually, my old man had a shorty 40 and I was in the back of that in a kid's seat. So um, I think they're awesome. And this one looks pretty tidy. He reckons he's picked up the toolboxes of Facebook Marketplace and welded up a box section frame and just back to basics with the camping gear. But that is exactly what we are talking about before with Clifford. It's awesome to see him out there and proving you don't need the biggest and best gear. He's out there having fun. And I'll tell you what, that looks like one tidy 40 series. Couldn't agree more, mate. That 47 is an absolute rig. And the fact he got some toolboxes off Facebook and welded up a bit of a frame for his rooftop tent and he's out there using it in an old truck, that is unreal. Mate, speaking of unreal, we've got this cool little... Four-wheel drive build from Jack Love. And, mate, this thing is epic. It's awesome to see the young future four-wheel drivers getting into it a bit and building a couple of inspirational little models of four-wheel drives for the future. This one, this little Lego four-wheel drive, is even towing a boat. So I imagine he probably took a bit of inspiration from Sean. There's even a table there doing some cooking. I wonder if that's supposed to be Sean on the left there with the, with the you know, the handsome one with the sunglasses on, maybe. Who knows? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I'd like to... um. I'd like to know what brand his table is because he's actually also flexed up on it. So that'd be good to have a table that's that strong. Over Christmas, my parents actually moved house and they'd been in that house for 20 years. And my mum found my box of Lego and I had some four-wheel drives like this. It was still made inside the Lego box. So I'll have to, I'll have to bring them along for my next gen episode and do a show and tell for the kids. But yeah, good on you, mate. That is a that is a nice looking truck. Definitely, definitely good on you, Jack. And uh, Jesse, can you bring that uh, that Lego camping? Maybe we can build some four-wheel drives yeah. around the bush. <laughs> Maybe, that's a good idea. All right, I'll bring it along. Mate, moving on to another fail. This one is from the Boonies and looks like another rollover with a 70 series. Oh, this is at the Springs Four Drive Park at Hardcore Hill, mate. We've done this uh, yeah. in our four drives and it's a good bit of fun, but oh, what's going to happen here? Oh, he's going across the track. Ah, classic. Oh, Ooh. that's less than ideal, Maybe the mate. old... Uh... No, maybe the old 70 series should have stuck to checking the fences, possibly. <laughs> well, at least he's given it a go, the boonies. But um, fortunately, it doesn't oh, look yeah. like a very bad rollover. It just looks like a bit of a nap. Nah. Uh, so bit hopefully they're the able door to and... pull the vehicle over and, and get it squared away. We've got some more from the kids here. And I'll tell you what, these builds are pretty cool. One of these ones here, this real colourful one, looks like it's even got suspension of its own. I never had that on any of mine. That is uh, awesome. He's got little captions on there, too. He's done it a, does, yeah. Oh, it's all, wow. Yeah, it's, he's got the camera car, he's got the dirty 30. Where's the 30. hot chilli sauce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Looks like it's got a bit more flex than uh, than the dirty 32, I reckon. Look at that. Oh, most definitely, yeah. And he, ha he hasn't rolled it over too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Cam, Billy and Ronnie, awesome effort on, uh, you know, telling us a story with your Lego bills there and pretty accurate as well. That's pretty epic, man. Yeah. I love it. And, mate, looks like we've got Mark and his son Bryce out wheeling in a little car and he's made a stormwater trench as a four-wheel drive track. That's all. Looks like he's even got a little bit of a wheel lift. That is epic, man. How cool is that? Young kids getting out in the backyard and having fun in the little cars. He's got a little pull rope on the front as a pretend winch. That's sick. Look at him go. He's got a... It's got a winch. It's got like a big UHF aerial on the front. It's a good bit of kit. I'll tell you what, when he's old enough to steer a proper car, he's going to be a good wheel if he's starting already. Good on you, Bryce. Definitely. That car looks like your GU, mate. No, he probably has similar wheeling skills to you. I don't know. He looks like he might be better than me. He's still on all four wheels and no, no, none of those panels are dinted. That's true. That's true. Well, Jocko, we definitely had some good ones sent in this week. And I tell you what, it's going to be hard to pick a winner, but I've picked one and I hope you've, you've had a chance to pick one too. I am going to go with Zane Tibbs in the uh, 40 Series Ute because it is super clean and it's a, it's a full back to basics camping setup. Like we said before, you don't need the flashes or all the super duper stuff to go camping. He's done what he can and he's out there using it. That is awesome. Good on you, Zane. We'll send a merch pack your way. Definitely, mate. Zane, you got a 4S merch pack coming your way. And, mate, I'm going to choose Billy and Ronnie with 
They're awesome little Lego creations because not only did they build some epic little rigs, but they also told a pretty epic story from out on the tracks with their little Lego rigs as well. So, mate, you've got some snatch vouchers coming to those boys, and I hope you enjoy yeah, that them. Yeah, awesome. And as yeah, soon as you did. can, get out, get out wheeling in, in your own cars when, when you're old enough. And um, maybe you can give Jesse some tips on building some Lego ones as well for the next time we're a camp. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> even, even better still, before you get your cars, get in your old man's car and use that. Because if you break that, you don't have to pay to fix it. But <laughs> yeah. keep sending don't them in. I love that, how you've don't used Don't tell the... them that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how they had a caption and it told a story, everyone. That, that was awesome. Yeah. Well-deserved well deserved. prize there, boys. Well deserved. Now, of course, if you guys want to get uh, your rigs, your fails, or you've got some keen future four drivers that want to get something cool that they've put together on Beers in the Shed, you can use the hashtags 4Drive247 fails, 4Drive247 rigs, and of course, 4Drive247 kids on Insta, TikTok, or our official Facebook group. Also, guys, don't forget, if you want to keep up to date with what we're up to and stay in touch with us, we'd love to hear from you. And the best thing you can do is support us on all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So like and subscribe and uh, keep up to date with what we're doing. Mate, speaking of what we're doing, we have some awesome stuff coming up. We've got Tasmania coming where we tackled the $1,000 track in some pretty epic rigs. We've got the second part of the Moab adventure and... A little while down the track, we've got Taking Clifford back out again on the New South Wales tough tracks. There is some awesome mm. stuff coming. So, as Jesse said, make sure you keep an eye on all our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, because yeah. there is some awesome forward driving coming your way. Yeah, that um, that Tassie $1,000 track episode looked cool. I was jealous I wasn't on that trip. It looked like you had a crack of time. I'm keen to watch it. It was loose, mate. It was loose. Well, Jesse... It has been awesome catching up with you again. I don't think I've seen you since the high country and we're well overdue to do some wheeling together yeah. soon. But for now, mate, it was yeah, good to definitely. chat to you again and, you know, reminisce on what was an epic trip and, of course, hear from the four drivers at home who wanted to know a little bit more. So good to talk to you, mate. Yeah, most definitely, mate. It was good to catch up. It has been too long. Hopefully, we can get out on the tracks together soon, maybe in the GU. Maybe even get that red Lux out in the tracks. What do you reckon? Oh, it's a little bit of a while off, mate. A little bit of a while <laughs> off to get that out there. But uh, now looking forward to getting back out on the tracks with you soon, mate. So be good. Get that GU running and uh, I'll see you when I'm looking at you, eh? Yeah, sounds good, mate.